Hello friends, this is Odds, and today we're doing another episode of Underrated Perks for Dead by Daylight. Now, the perk we're going to be covering today is called Play With Your Food, and this is an insanely strong perk. It might just be the single most underrated perk in the entire game, and I don't say it because it's one of my favorites, but I really do mean it. It is a perk that I was about to get to at some point, but seeing that it's on the Shrine of Secrets right now, I knew I had to stop everything else I was doing and make this video because you need to know about it. If you're a killer main, if you play a specific killer, if you have a specific playstyle, this is a perk that can really, really up your game. And the best part about it is that it works better the higher level you play as, which is something not every perk can say, by the way. Let me tell you what it does. Play with your food makes you obsessed with one survivor. When you chase your obsession and let them escape, you receive a token up to a maximum of three tokens. Each of these tokens increases your movement speed by three, four, and five percent. This is a big deal. First of all, this movement speed gets added to everything you do. Carrying survivors, using your chainsaw for a sprint, anything at all you do, as long as you have a token, will be increased by five percent. You have probably heard just how bad the Huntress is at chasing, when her movement speed is only 5% slower than a normal killer. If you are a survivor, you have probably been on the receiving end of a killer who blast lusts and chases you for a long time. How difficult it is to chase them, right? 5% in a game this precise is a huge deal. Make sure you use this perk at tier 3 and then it will begin to really shine. However, this movement speed does not stay forever. Each time you become uh, you use an offensive action, you will spend one of the tokens. Offensive actions include normal attacks from every single killer, we're talking M1 attacks that injure survivors, as well as some powers from certain killers, normally powers who can straight up injure survivors. Uh, chainsaws consume tokens, hatchets consume tokens, legion stab consume tokens, corrupt perch, the red one, consumes tokens, not the green one, oddly enough, but there is an array of things that you can do that do not consume tokens, that can down survivors, but make you preserve them. We're talking about grabbing people out of lockers, grabbing people out of actions, grabbing people out of uh, bolts over windows or pallets. All of these actions will be good for you because you will get to preserve these tokens. We're going to try to be very, very non-offensive and keep those tokens because that speed will make a difference. The thing that you need to know about Dead by Daylight is that many, many good people play this game. People who have thousands of hours in this game. As you climb the ranks, you will come across more and more of them as a killer. These are survivors who know the maps inside out, who know the numbers by heart, who can tell exactly how far you are by just a quick glance and will run you around a structure for a set amount of times until the very last minute, at which point they'll use their exhaustion perk or they'll drop a pallet, they'll put some bear between you and rinse and repeat. You will never fucking catch them. They're just that great. They're just that good. They know how to run you to make your life miserable. That's where that extra speed comes into play. These survivors who are used to knowing everything by heart will be thrown off left, right, all the time when you add a little bit of speed. If you have 5%, 10%, or God forbid, 15%, they are not getting away from you. That is the brilliant part about this perk. Unlike Hex Ruin, which is a very oppressive, very up in your face, very obnoxious perk that survivors have to deal with like head on, this is a perk that doesn't really let them know that you're using it. It is a very insidious, very um, an intrusive perk that just happens to work when it matters, that doesn't really let them know. They'll be wondering, why are my teammates scoring down so quickly? How is this killer so fast? They will never guess that you have it, and that's the best part about it. Now, which are the killers that you should never run this perk on? Let me get that uh, out of the way. Never run uh, this perk unless you're very, very crazy, on killers that move with their power. That includes Nurse, Legion, uh, Hag. These killers, they attack all the time, they consume tokens very quickly, and they don't really need the mobility boost most of the time because they use their power for mobility. I do not recommend play with your food on these killers under any circumstances. We also have the Huntress and other similar killers in this mix, but feel free to experiment. Killers who make very good use of this perk are the killers that can force to lose a chase, like the Wraith. The Wraith can lose a chase very quickly by using his power, by cloaking and losing a chase on the spot. And also killers who are naturally good at preserving the tokens by not performing offensive actions too many times. We've got Leatherface. Leatherface can just 
make up for that little lower speed when using his chainsaw with Play With Your Food, catch you everywhere with a chainsaw, and only need one chainsaw to down you, which means that he can use three tokens to down three different peoples very, very effectively. He's one of the better users of Play With Your Food, and I think it's the one perk that elevates him from being one of the worst killers in the game to being actually kind of scary in some situations. Uh, Trapper could use this perk if you can corral people into running into your traps, you can preserve tokens. If you corral your obsession into running into a trap during a chase, you actually gain a token because the game thinks that you've lost them which is hilarious and i've done a number of times you can also run it on killers like myers if you run a tombstone and you tombstone by like if you instantly mori a survivor with a tombstone you will not lose a token which is again incredible you can run it on things like plague uh, play can get everybody injured and good survivors would not cleanse against you Can you imagine not cleansing against the killer that can move so much faster than you? Yeah, it is a it is a big deal Many other killers can can also use this as well provided that they're very very smart You need to manage your tokens and how do you do that first? You need to find your obsession Your obsession will always be the survivor who has the entity tentacles around their name when you find your obsession, you need to get in a chase. This is very simple. To get in a chase, you need to be somewhat close to your obsession, or to any survivor for that matter. You cannot begin a chase across the map, no matter what. They need to be in your field of view, you need to see them visually, and they need to start running. If they don't run, the, uh, the chase will not start, but this is fine because most survivors' reactions when they see you is to run away. Once this has begun, you will know that you're chasing the obsession with two indicators. One, you will normally hear the chase music as well as a sting, a musical effect. I will play it out so that you can tell it apart. Can you hear that? That's the obsession when you begin a chase with them. If you chase multiple survivors, make sure that you hear that sting or else it won't count. And you will also see the obsession uh, tentacles move and that's how you know as well that the obsession's being chased. Once the obsession's being chased, now it's time to lose them. How do you lose them? If you're the Wraith, as I said, you can cloak and that will force the chase uh, to end right there. You will need to wait for the cooldown uh, of the perk to do it again. You can't do it um, right afterwards, otherwise this perk would be completely broken. You need to wait a little bit, but once that cooldown is gone, you can repeat and do the exact same thing. With every other killer, uh, the thing that you're forced to do is to end the chase normally. You can the, the best way to do this is to walk away from the obsession and to not look at them. For a chase to end, you need to not be looking at the uh, at, at the person that you're chasing. You need to break line of sight, uh, put them out of your field of view. The easiest way, as I've said, is to just literally pull a 180 and walk away. The further you are from the person you're chasing, the quicker the chase will end. However, for the more advanced killers and the smarter killers, there is another way to end the chase that can even be more beneficial if you are actually committing to chasing your obsession. And that is to proxy chase. Proxy chase is the activity, the action of making the game believe that you're not chasing, but chasing still and closing the gap. How do you do this? You find your obsession, and let's say that he's running away in the, in the, in, in the opposite direction, and you have a, a big of a distance to, to close the gap. You begin to chase, but you do not look at them. You stare at the ground, or you look up, or you look sideways. Do not look at them, but keep running after them. And then the game will be tricked into believing that you're not chasing them. It will not end the chase as quickly because you'll be closer, but it will end the chase eventually, and you will gain your stack. And then you can look up, begin the chase again, and repeat. Do this a few times, and you'll get tokens very, very, very quickly. Meaning that if you want to tunnel your obsession, there is nothing nothing they can do. If the obsession is the last person that you leave uh, alive, that person has zero chance of, it doesn't matter how many pilots are left in the game, they will not get away from you. With three tokens, you are an, uh, an unstoppable force of nature. But you'll find that out yourself. The other thing that you can do, of course, is to just find your obsession and quickly switch targets and make the other chases much, much easier. But we'll see this in action very, very soon. Uh, another thing that we should know is that finding our obsession is not always going to be easy. There are many maps where the obsession could be very far away, so we're going to try to complement this with other perks that will help us do that. And I'm going to talk about the build that we're going to put together to show this in action.
And here it is. We're gonna use Play With Your Food on Michael Myers. Myers might not be the most obvious choice for Play With Your Food, but it is his own perk, so I thought it would be fun to run on him. We will be getting as many stacks as possible, and we will be at three maximum stacks right before we trigger Evil Within th uh, 3 to begin to one-shot survivors. So that will be our play. Once we get to tier 3, our terror radius will increase, and that's when our next perk will come into play. That is Infectious Fright. It is a plague perk that works really well on Michael. When you stab someone, everybody else who's nearby within your terror radius will scream. With the increased terror radius of tier 3, this covers even more distance. For 6 seconds, you will see um, a little scream uh, indication, knowing where the survivor was, and giving you a very fast um, information so that you can down a survivor, leave them on the ground, and go for the next person. If you don't hear anybody, then you can hook the first, the first survivor and move over to a second one. It is a really, really strong perk on Michael. Another thing that will help us keep survivors close to each other and make sure the generators don't go by too quickly is Corrupt Intervention. Corrupt Intervention blocks the three furthest generators away from us, forcing survivors to be closer to us and forcing them into fewer generators. And what do survivors do when there's less generators to work on? Discordance. They group on generators and discordance pops up. Discordance will let us know when two or more survivors are working on a generator. And this is a super good perk by itself. We might cover it in another episode, but it is a particularly good perk to run if you're running play with your food. Anytime you're chasing one guy who's not your obsession and you see this pop off, you know that there's a really good chance that the obsession is working right there. There is, there are so many situations where I found the obsession thanks to discordance, or I found everybody else thanks to discordance, and then the obsession has has had to come to help. I cannot recommend it enough. As I said, it has very good synergy with corrupt intervention because the fewer generators available will force them to stack together. As for add-ons, we're going to be running uh, run-of-the-mill stuff. Memorial Flower will increase your stalking rate by twelve percent. Nothing to write home about, but it's always helpful. And the dead rabbit will decrease your terror radius. This dead rabbit kind of makes up for not using monitor and abuse, and it has a very nice side effect. It reduces our terrorists in tier 2, when we want to be sneaky and unpredictable, but it increases in tier 3, which again, gives us more range for infectious fright. This is great. We're gonna make sure we get all the stacks, and we use them to their full advantage. The really nice, beautiful thing about it is just how quickly survivors' expectations are shattered. When you begin to chase them and they begin to loop you and they are so confident that they can go for another loop and then you re they realize that you're right with them, it is the most satisfying feeling in the world. Now, lucky for me, I've already recorded the game, so I already know how it turns out. I did this part of the video before um, afterwards, but you haven't seen it yet, so I hope that you enjoy it a lot. And again, thank you so, so much for watching. All right, hopefully we'll get something done here. This, uh, this map is quite interesting. It has a central basement that can be a real pain to deal with. And it's mostly like, it feels like a big circle, even though it's not circular shaped. Um, Killer Croc is one of the cloud deaths. And hopefully at this point, I'm just gonna check these places real quick, see if anybody spawned here. Yeah, we gotta spawn. At this point, hopefully we will hear the score that's pop up there, right there. I think that's him too. Yep, that's the obsession. I'm just gonna juice him up. I'm gonna lose sight of him. I'm gonna make sure I don't see him when I get my stack. There it is. You're gonna drop that pallet for me? Alright. I think it's time to leave him. Let's go for the other two. We got two stacks to work with for a little while at least. We might uh, find the obsession later, again. Ah! Yeah, I know about that. What are they doing? All right, we're gonna buy ourselves a little bit of time. I'm not interested in having a lot of stock. We can get some more of the obsession later and get our stacks to say the best, um, or play with your food as well. But that should be enough. Okay. I thought you might we I thought you might go back. This is why this cordance is so good. Being able to down someone next to a gen that's nearly done is so strong as a killer. Now you can defend this. You can regress the generator. 
and make sure that nothing gets done for a little while. They have to start on another. And co with corrupt intervention, even better. They are going to be piled up in one of these, though, I reckon. So we need to hurry up, find the obsession. They're not stacked on any, or else, you know, the Scordons would have let us know. So we know for almost sure that they're not being very productive. All right, that's the obsession, but did I also see a second one? You know what? I think it might be time. Let's lose him. This is super weird. But trust me, there's there's some reason for it. I'm just gonna run him until he drops the pilot. Then I'm gonna break the pilot. I'm looking at the ground, so I'm not seeing him. I'm gonna keep looking at the ground again. We should lose the chase very quickly. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Alright. Just so you know, you don't have to do this really dumb shit. <laughs> You don't have to do this dumb shit every time. You can just look away and lose the chase normally. And that's probably much better. But if you want to close in the gate, the, not the gate, the, the gap. Oh, that's so tempting. I'm going to make her drop this. Oh. Very well. Let's break it. Lose her again. And next time I find someone, whoever it is, we're pulling that up. Shit, come on, come on, come on. All right, the squad just went off. And yeah, there were two people here. The other one is still hiding behind it, I reckon. Right. So that's one down. We have two stacks. We are fast as fuck. And they're not running away. Thanks to Infectious, we have a pretty good idea of where they went. There you go. And... Nobody else is nearby. Which lets me know that no, like they, they made some distance. It's a good time to go back and hook, probably. We still have one uh, one stack left, which is great. Which is going to allow us to hook a little bit faster as well. Remember, uh, when you have a stack, it, it applies to all of your speeds. All right, you're kind of letting me know where they are, are you? Or are you just running? Are you just crawling away? So you don't get hooked next to your buddy. Getting two hooks next to each other is also a really good deal. And a gen here we can kick and regress. Even better. Remember, one of the people that has to come for the save is the Obsession. So if I play cat and mouse with the Obsession for a little while, that's only going to benefit me. The Obsession was last seen on that gen, so I'm going to assume that they're still kind of there. If they're not, they'll lose some regression on this. Let's kick it. And try to... It's time to go back now. Oh! Would you look at that? I'm going to lose her. Not look at her. Not look at her at all. There we go. Perfect. I could have definitely hit the person there a bit, but I'm interested in doing another swipe. I want to show you just how strong this perk is. So we're going to get a third... Uh, wait, this is not my obsession. Sorry, you girls all look the same. Hmm. Well, given the fact that we made this mistake... Hello. I wonder if we should... Ah, that's okay. We'll stick to it. We'll use Infectious Right to fight our obsession. Or follow that. One of the two. Mm. Right, they run the hell away. You're over here. We still have one stag. That girl is saving our Sprimbers. Sprim it's very obvious. Oh. I'm gonna be completely honest. I thought she made it way too far. And that she wouldn't come back. And she just hit me with... With a fad uh, life there, it seems. Obsession is over there. If I down this girl quick enough, everybody's down. Oh, she ran in the opposite direction. Must have had Iron Will or something, or maybe she just had good distance on me in the first place. Well done, at any rate. The Obsession's gonna have to come back for the first person that I downed that was right here. At any rate, we're gonna see them and get a stack again. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Perfect. You hear the musical cue. And that's when you know you can break chase. And if you're at such distance, you can break it very quickly. Now, because she came in this direction... Mm, wow, they picked themselves up so quick. Right, I'm gonna get another stack and... I've lost all the things I... This is so good. This is so good. We just gotta grab out of it. We know where this person is. We get a second stack, don't lose the last one. And these two are quite screwed, I reckon. Come through. Come on. Oh, you're healthy. I thought you'd be injured. Yeah, you're gonna fit me a bit. Oh, 
Almost good enough. Obsession's still there. But let's go for the third one and do this whole thing once again. Okay, I'm gonna get a stack, but it's more important that I down this girl first. I'm gonna break this. We'll get another one. And if she doesn't have decisive... I'm gonna be able to just kill her. And if she does, she'll become my new obsession, so... I don't care. Bye. Good attempt. Perfect. If you're carrying someone and the obsession makes the mistake of running into you, it's also very, very important to look at them until you hear the sting. Yeah, you guys made a mistake, I reckon. That's why you never fully stalk someone. You might need to finish up the... Not from the 99... Uh, stalking. That's why you never want to fully stalk someone. You always want to leave a little bit in them so that you can pull that off. All right. Obsession has been hooked. We still have quite a bit of time left on this baby. They're gonna be working on this one. I see. She ran really quickly with that sprint burst, but we're moving at 125 speed. We're not that. We're not that much slower, mind you. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest. Whatever she did here worked really well, because she lost me. These guys were very misleading. I just remember the last time I saw you hide in one of the LT walls. So I came here and I heard you breathing. Good stuff. We can down her here. I think it's her second or third. Second. And we can get this uh, gender regressing. We still have a little bit of extra speed. Notice that we haven't done a whole lot of looping. Uh, we've wasted a lot of time uh, building up the stacks, but when it comes to it, the chases end very, very quickly. The obsession, I think, is still here. Oh, you spoiled me. I think I saw a second one, though. Just in case. No? Perfect. Remember, there's a big cooldown, so it's not like I can immediately, like, lose this person in a chase. But I'm gonna get a third one right now. I've gotten so much stock, holy fuck. Alright, girl, you re you really are dental hook now. Ooh. Okay, that was a very, very ambitious swing of me. And it would have ended just fine. Uh, maybe not the kind of play you want to do if you have play with your food. Yeah, learn from my mistake. You don't want to do that, really. If you miss a, like a prediction like that... Obviously, if you hit it, that's great, but if you miss it, you do lose a stack early, which is a bad thing. We want to keep the stacks. They're very, very precious. What each stack is... Well, we'll get another one, I guess. You'll see what I mean. I'm just gonna... I'm not gonna keep her in... I'm just gonna chase her, but not really. And now she's dead. There's, there's fuck all she can do. In a loop that's not, like, humongous, you, you move so damn fast, it's ridiculous. Alright, see, now her first instinct is gonna go- it's gonna be to go around. And this 5% extra speed is just- it's just too much. They can't do anything about it. I'm gonna kick this and I'll pick up the obsession first. It'll be her second hook, and I think it might be the second one for this one too. There's no way the skill was fast enough. No way. Right, good. I didn't look around, but I didn't hear her uh, scream. Maybe I should've. Uh, if you're running Infectious Fright, of course, look around. Okay, scratch marks, they're coming for the rescue. And this will be your second one, too? Your third one. Very well. Why would you do that? Why would you do that, Megan? <laughs> okay. This poor unfortunate thing. All right, let's see what she did. Uh, you don't want to get in a locker in front of the killer. That's one. The other one, if you run, the, if you see the, you need to look behind you. If you see the killer come through here, you want to go the other way, right? And then threaten to go through that window, so the killer has to force you into a certain direction. And if you're in this spot right here, this is the short end of the loop where I can kind of mind game you. You don't want to do that. You want to run to the long end of the loop over here and then play around the, uh, the longer end. And then maybe you might be in a good position. But anyway, Meg, you pretty much allowed me to kill your entire team by <laughs> going down every time. So uh, we'll give you the hatch. 
Don't resist, though. Don't go. Don't fucking resist. There you go. <laughs> well done. <laughs> all right. Hopefully, this taught you a little bit about how to use play with your food. By all means, uh, feel free to experiment. See how it works for you. Uh, the whole looking at the ground thing is very, very dumb. It's stupid. But it also doesn't tell you them exactly what you're doing. It's a little bit less obvious than when you look away and chase someone while you face them, uh, while you face the other uh, end of the map, which is always pretty funny. <laughs> so do feel free to experiment and figure out exactly what's the best way for you to lose chase. Do you remember that it pairs well with uh, one-shot perks and one-shot killers, such as Bubba and Michael? These were these were a fun bunch. Hi, YouTube or Twitch. <laughs> all right, all right. We're not allowed. <laughs> Good lads. But anyway, uh, I hope that you learned to like this perk. It has made me enjoy some killers that I used to have um, a bit of a disdain for. And it is such a fun, fun perk to use. I hope that you buy it from the shrine if you never gave it a go. And that you have a lot of success with it. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Thank you so, so much for watching.